workshop. Um, I have been playing the banjo in a, a place called Round Peak in uh, Mount Airy, North Carolina for 11 years in a band called Backstep. Um, we play a lot of fiddles conventions and do a lot of that um, type of thing. Um, and uh, play in all the contests and we play a lot of dances and been around. And uh, I've had a really awesome experience in the last 11 years understanding a lot of things about uh, music's ties to culture and to the community and how ways of life have to do with the ways of playing and that kind of thing. And in that, I would just add in this moment that um, any kind of music that you're trying to play, if you're trying to get into a style of playing or a type of playing that a person in particular, you want to sound like them, that it, it is really important to understand the person and the kind of life that goes with it because there's something there, even if it's not obvious in the moment, as you play and as you spend time with that music, it becomes a part of why you're doing it. Um, and it becomes a really important thing, even if it isn't in the beginning. So I just want to add in that uh, tidbit of my experience with playing music and how it's enriched things for me. Um, that I'm not just playing the banjo or playing someone's music, uh, but it is a feeling and a type of way of life that you're actually grabbing onto that people have, you know. Um, so in that, uh, I feel I'm, I'm uh, 34 years old, so I spent most of my adult life in Mount Airy kind of doing that and uh, taking in that whole thing. So I play in the style of, uh, during the beginning of my time there, I cared for uh, this woman named Charlie Mae Freeman who uh, needed in-home care. She had uh, Alzheimer's and stuff like that, so she needed a lot of help. So I, I stayed with her uh, for several years, and um, her husband was a banjo player named Dix Freeman. And uh, one of the things I used to do is play a tape of his over and over um, through the stereo in the house because he talked on this recording. It was called Step Back. Um, you can still get this recording. Um, Chester and Nick McMillan have plenty of copies of it and love to distribute it. Um, and it's really special because Dix is talking about uh, the ways of life in that area. When he was a kid, he was born in 1908, um, and is also uh, just one of the real links to that time frame where the, it was the real deal, you know. Um, so in that time of playing that recording over and over, he, uh, his banjo music, that was some, like I got super locked into that kind of playing or, or that became my idea of what a banjo should sound like. So uh, a lot of people compare my playing to Dix Freeman's playing and I do a lot of things in the same style as him. Uh, so if you want to figure out uh, maybe who's more masterful than I at the things that I'm going to show you today, that would be the place to go. Uh, I'm just going to try and relay some of this stuff to you. Now I'm going to go over a tune uh, here after a while called Backstep Cindy that's kind of a signature tune that um, our band is called Backstep and we chose it off of the name of that tune because uh, I tend to play really close to what he did on the recording there so we'll be working through that tune here in a minute after I, I want to talk about a few technical things that um, when I began playing the banjo like I know that um, I don't know the everybody in the workshop is in a different place with your banjo playing just like everyone in the world is uh, so there's you know, nothing to be lost going to a fundamental or, or playing the tune, so I kind of like to go to both things because I feel like the way that I discovered playing the banjo tangibly in my hands uh, made it a much easier trip for me, uh, actually, once I understood the music to do what I wanted to do. Uh, so one of the very first things that I ever did on the banjo to understand my right hand and how to strike accurately is simplifying it down to one string and the thumb string at a time and, and uh, mastering sequences uh, from there. So first of all, I'm just talking about what probably everyone's had probably somebody show you just going this way and pulling your thumb up so that whenever you're striking, I always started on the bottom string because it was easier to hit the bottom than to dodge the others and try and start in the middle. So just because it's easier to do that, so you're going to go from the, when you hit the bottom string, your thumb lands on the top, and not by yanking your thumb, but by just letting the friction of your thumb lifting off, pulling the string. So just doing 
just doing. Now, uh, initially, it's probably harder to maintain the same tone between the two strings in a consistent way. So the very first thing that I did for a pretty long period of time, and I mean, maybe not that long, but for, for a short spell of time there in the beginning of playing the banjo, is just figuring out, just sitting down and not trying to play songs or jump ahead of myself, because the coordination level on the banjo is what scares people off, right? And so if you get rid of that, uh, not that anyone here is scared of that anymore, you're ready to take it on, because you're here. But <laughs> you understand that that's what people have in their head, probably for a reason. So anyway, I, I got into this thing of trying to say, okay, can I do this sound 20 times without faltering the sounds between the two hits? So then I know that I'm muscle memory-wise teaching my hand how to hit and stroke the banjo so that I'm not getting bad tones or clip noises or everything's going to be real even Steven, if you will, throughout all the playing of the notes in the tune. So you don't end up with strange gates to the tune when you actually know the melody notes you're trying to play because you're not doing some weird pattern that uh, just comes from trying to probably do too many things at once. So once you get into the bottom string, which is going to be the simplest thing because you're not dodging anything, then you're just going to do that through each of the rest of the strings in combination with the thumb string so that you're going to get where you can hit this string, the next string, the next string, or the bottom string, and hit the thumb string all in that same accuracy. And then once you get through doing that, which this doesn't take, we're talking about if you took five minutes a day, you're probably going to teach your right hand enough stuff in two weeks to never really have to do it again unless you just have a, a more of a struggle with coordination, right? Which means you could just do five minutes a day for the rest of your life and it wouldn't be a problem. And uh, that's the experience I've had. I hope that's the same one that you have and you can get over it so fast. So uh, even though this is just on a really elementary level, so then when you do, once you get through doing that and you've got each string where you're accurately hitting just independently, then you start alternating and creating intentional patterns. Like I'm gonna go from this string to the middle one back and forth and start complicating it so that you can also, like you're basically going to classically train your hand not to be your problem, okay? So that's something I came up with to overcome that in the beginning of my banjo playing that I recommend doing um, to take you to another place where you're not fighting the instrument to do what you want to do because that's the, the thing that stops you from having the good feelings from music. Um, and until you overcome that, it's not really as joyful as uh, it can be, I think. Um, so, uh, Basically, that's, that's the way I feel like if you have any problems where you, you feel like any of that stuff, which even I need to be doing probably more of that, even though that's my own concept of how to do it. Uh, so anyway, I hope that works for you, and I recommend doing that just in terms of getting your hand ready. But um, So now uh, we're in the D tuning, which I was telling her. Um, we got A, A D, uh, A, D, E, and um, we're going to play a song called Backstep Cindy. So I will play backstep Cindy, which, uh, and uh, we'll get familiar with what the sound of the tune is and you can kind of pay attention to the different weird things I'm doing. And I'm going to try and break it down and get you doing all that same weird stuff if desired, okay? <laughs>
when I was playing that that there was one more thing about the technical aspects of playing the banjo that I forgot. Okay, so the, uh, the drop thumb technique also practiced in the same way, which I would hate to leave anyone who's not familiar with the drop thumb technique going away from a banjo workshop, not this information. Okay, so uh, we already went through before I go any further with the song uh, about um, how you drop it like this. Okay, so the the uh, drop thumb situation you can also practice in that same method. Okay, so that uh, when you all we're really talking about doing is alternating the use of the thumb with the use of, of this finger, in case you're not understanding, so that um, you end up using your thumb twice as much is about all that we're really talking about. So that uh, in, the, in the same sense as before, here, and then the next time, I find that it's, it's difficult to start with the bottom string with your thumb drop because it's the same string that you would need to strike with. So we need to use uh, the string second from the bottom to start with drop thumb technique when you're just training your hand to do it, okay? So that the, the sequence would be to drop like this, and then the second time, instead of letting your thumb drop to the top, drop your thumb to the string on the bottom, okay? So then you're gonna go here, here, and then pull this thumb off of that string instead of the top string, okay? So, so then that same thing, practicing that same drop until you can repeat it. Really, it sounds different than, but it's actually the same thing, right? Which is what's going to throw you off about that. Okay, so the so the same technique being used there of going strike, thumb comes off, strike, thumb comes off down here. So so the more you do that, the easier it'll be to drop, and then you do the same alternating thing that you did in the first technique. So it's so when we're just going like this and striking the strings individually there, you do the same thing, dropping your thumb in the alternate way. So that it would be first, I'm going to drop it to this string. And then I'm going to drop it to the string above it. And then the other, you know what I'm saying? So you're going to alternate and teach your finger one string at a time what is that message that you're sending to the muscles of that thumb. And then it starts reacting just as fast as the other finger. And you can drop the thumb any old time. But you'll find that you spend most of your time dropping your thumb to that string or the bottom when you get into real interesting things going on. Okay? So uh, drop thumb technique, same technique alternating where the thumb is dropping, but the, the uh, first finger is activated the same way. Uh, okay, so you can incorporate that into your plane uh, that way. So, anyhow, now back to this back step, Cindy. So one of the things in the, in the beginning of the back step, Cindy, that Dick Freeman is known for, that um, I know a friend of mine that um, when I very first started playing the banjo, I used to hang around Frank Lee, which everybody probably is familiar with that plays the banjo to some degree. Um, plays in the Freight Hoppers, and he's an excellent banjo player and uh, music enthusiast, ambassador, etc. And um, and so he was into Dick Freeman a little bit, and he was confused on the recording. He thought that he was hearing um, him striking this bottom, or yeah, I have it thinking that he was noting with this finger, but really it was actually uh, hitting, just doing this. And Frank was going out of his way to do all this crazy stuff to do this on the other part of the banjo, and really it was just this, and uh, it was just a funny funny part of that story. But so in the beginning of the back step, Cindy, what Dick Freeman is known for the most is that all three of the uh, tops going on this top string three times in a row, so at the beginning of the song, right? Rather rather than so many other things that you've heard before, right? So uh, in that, so you're, when I, uh, I know I have a fretless banjo, and so the world becomes complicated for all of us. Um, and honestly, I've never played a fretted banjo, so I'm going to be randomly guessing what fret we're talking about. Um, but you may be able to visually just get it from me, but just so you know, that is not, I'm not here because I'm an expert on fret locations on the banjo. <laughs> uh, always uh, just played this way, and uh, I don't know any better, so it's honest. All right, so uh, in the beginning, I always slide into the first note on the bottom here, which uh, I guess that might be your fifth fret there. Okay, that's a good guess, okay? So the first note is on this fifth fret, and I'm sliding in what may be from your third one. <laughs> I'm not sure, okay? So, okay, so that we're gonna get there first. So we're going slide, up. So the whole slide is one stroke at one time, right? Miss the bone string, okay? So slide into there in one, two, three, it's like, Ding, 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 right? 
successful, but we'll have to be very slow uh, in order to make sure that with all of us that we are not uh, in a chaotic state. Uh, okay, so uh, let's, I'll play the, the first half of the phrase, and we'll play that, and then I'll play the second half, if I can get my brain to do that, and then we'll play the whole thing slow. So first, just the half of the phrase that we got to in the beginning, okay? So we're going to go, okay, so let's do that together. Ready? And... Thank you. 
whole slow phrase, I'll play the whole slow phrase, then, and then we'll play it together that way, okay? So we'll get the pace set in our head, and maybe we can stay in the same one, okay? Okay, and now let's try and do that all together. I feel like we're getting somewhere on that as far as everybody, the, more, the majority of people seem to understand. Can everybody hear okay and see okay? That's good because we're, we're getting in there now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So let's go over that same phrase at that same speed here again. Okay? The whole phrase. Ready? Okay. So now we're at the point where we're going to repeat that same phrase two times. Now this is a crooked tune just because, heck, it's a workshop. Might as well do a crooked tune. It's not, it's going to be crooked in the second half with by just a little tag, which I'll try and uh, make make sense for you. But uh, it, it throws the tune right, uh, right back around real nice. So don't worry about it too much. Okay. So let's, uh, let's play that first phrase. Let's go for the same speed, but we'll go two times in a row and then we'll try and pull it up to a little bit more of a medium pace just so we can get a grasp at least on the first half uh, before we move into uh, a whole lot of hammer on, pull off madness, okay? And sliding in the whole bit, okay? All right, so same speed on the first part. Let's go through that again slow, maybe two more times, and then we'll do a little bit quicker after that, okay? Ready? And. second part of this tune is going to sit, okay? So we're going to spend, um, when we get to that part and connect them, realize that don't do what I normally do, which is jump like the part's going to be different than where I'm already at. It's right there <laughs> when we do put them together. And uh, uh, for some reason, I always, my instinct is it must not, I got to jump my fingers and then I've lost it, but it's actually do nothing is the advice on that spot. Okay, so starting the second part, um, uh, Okay, so it double hammers on. Let me play the second part first so we can get an idea of where we're going rather than me, in case you've forgotten it already, try and uh, lead you blindly around, okay? So uh, here I'll put the, I might as well play the whole thing and we'll just concentrate on, uh, on the second part of, uh, after that so then you understand the relationship, okay? that I just mentioned it earlier, using onto uh, the string, the second string from the bottom so that uh, you're really going to hit and do that exact mechanism, like in the, in the very beginning of the second part, okay? Okay, so it is, instead of um, 
then I'm going to go back to that same string. So, so uh, once you finish the part before, you're going to be at uh, right. Then you're going to go right back to the double hammer on place. No, no, no. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So when you finish the, the next part, the first thing that happens, you're going to strike the bottom string. Thumb comes off. You're going to drop your thumb to this string. Okay. Just like we talked about. And when I and then when I come back to the top, I'm actually going to hit this. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm right here. About my second fret on my uh, same hammer on spot is where I'm actually going to hit after I drop my thumb. Um, so you're really going to go. sense over what's going on so you're gonna go here drop your thumb and then strike this guy the, the same hammer on guy so that the, the process from one to the other you'd be a right so the hammer on is the finishing up of the part before okay so remember that we ended the other part with so when we go right after that strike, so let's start with that hammer on just so that it makes sense to tie it in because it's actually hard to start that without your hand already moving, uh, even though it's slow and everything. So uh, let's make it, um, sorry, okay, so the motion will be the hammer on. say no and I can go over it again. Not, not so much? Okay. Me? Okay, okay. I got you. Alright, so, um, sorry. Alright, so it's, it's just weird. It's weird. So it kind of sounds weird, slow, uh, but it all together comes together way better than that. So like, um, with the hammer on, then thumb. Does that make more sense? Slow when I slow it. I couldn't quite get even myself articulated. Um, so let's just do that one hammering. I mean, uh, one uh, drop thumb part. Nothing else happening. Okay. So what's happening there is just going to be the drop thumb. in the first moment where you drop it because you're not actually going to hit it, right? So it's hitting that. Is it, you understand that? Then you're going to come back and note this after the drop thumb part, okay? So it, same hammer on spot after that, okay? Uh, let's start from a, a pause place, and, and let's um, let's go. Well, let's go from the, the the end of the first phrase where I'm doing the hammer on to the double hammer on slide to the open string, right into this to the drop thumb and the note. But we'll do it all in the same segmented, slow way, so that we're going to be doing it unified, uh, and maybe it's going to come right out. Okay, so. The speed, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and make sure I, I'm accurate, but this part is hard to do slow. I'm just admitting it straight out. <laughs> All right. So it would be... Okay. All right, so you're going to skip a note, kind of, is what makes it so weird. You're going to drop one note when you do the drop thumb, because you're not using this. You're just using your thumb, which might have been throwing everybody off on that. Like, yeah. where's the note? Okay. Um, but as I have no frets, I have no bounds, and I will just throw notes away like trash. <laughs> okay, so here we go in a slow motion fashion, that phrase, and then we'll try and put it all together. So... Again, ready? All right, and again. Okay. Okay. Now, let's go. Uh, 
start from the same hammer on spot uh, anyway. Okay. That's a good place to stop for the next that segment repeats also just like the first part had once we got the first thing, okay, it's gonna be the same deal for a second. Okay? So we're gonna drop thumb sequence two times, and then the hammer and on starts again, so we're gonna go Okay, so it's the same thing that we started with, obviously, in the other time when we, that's going to repeat from the first part to the second part, too, so it's the same lick. So, now we're just going to do two times of that same thing that we spent all our time a second ago on, and then we're going to uh, add the same thing we already know, right, because we double hammered on there, talked about, that's why I'm calling that spot, okay, so we should be good on that part. So, let's, let's, I'll uh, play the slow segment, and then let's play the slow segment together, and we'll see if we can get that one part all together, okay? So, here we're going to go, uh, starting from the same hammer-on spot, and I'll try and keep, that was a little fast, I think, for the bunch, so I'll try and do it just a tad slower than that uh, throughout this, but we'll do that uh, several times in a row until we're all kind of getting that feeling together, okay? So here we go, I'll play it, and then I'll just continue just like we did before, because I think that was the yeah. best route for everybody, okay? So here we go. Uh, It's time for whatever workshop you're going to do next, which is a fiddle, I think, is second. Anybody interested in going to the fiddle workshop? We'll start right when this one is going to end. And the fiddle player is Nick McMillan, which is uh, his grandmother's Charlie May, and his grandfather is Dick Freeman. Um, not on his father's side, uh, but on his mother's side. He's got it coming both ways, and his dad is giving the uh, guitar workshop now, but I'm afraid you've pretty much missed that unless you run over there and leave now. Right? But you obviously don't play the guitar, so it's not a problem. And there's a bass workshop also this afternoon that Nick's going to give. He's a great bass player. I've got a band called Kelly and the Cowboys that plays western swing and early country music. Um, well, I don't play the banjo. I play the fiddle and sing songs. Um, but uh, he plays the bass in that band, and he's giving the bass workshop. So if you're uh, wanting to learn how to play the bass, seriously good idea. Okay. So, anyways, now let's play again the whole song all the way up to the place where we were just at uh, here finishing in the same slow pace. Ready? I did not 
not tell you to do, didn't I? Yeah. Did that just happen? That's okay. Like I said, this is the danger of a workshop with me. These things, I will drive you off the road, and then I'll have to pull you out of the ditch. But I'll pull you out. Don't worry. Okay. So now we're going to drop our thumb one time. In the very beginning of that part, I got carried away with how it does when, you, when you're rolling it, okay? So in the very beginning of that part, there's something, uh, the order is, it's not that there's anything, uh, it's just an order of which device, whether you're using the drop thumb thing or the hammer-on thing. So let's not get too, it's not that big of a problem. I just threw in, a, I skipped a, a hammer, a uh, drop thumb part. So let me make sure I'm giving you the right thing to get into that part. Okay. The sandwich doesn't happen in the beginning of it. It happens in the second part after it. After you do the, the hammer on in that part the first time, that's actually the beginning of the sandwich part, okay? So, because we're not going to do the hammer-on part, that's part of the, it's only sandwiched by the end of the first part, am I getting every, the A part? Okay, you, is this making sense? The hammer-on part here is actually the end of the A part, B part, is that, yeah, okay? So the A part's coming across, it ends, B part, okay? So the, the part on the high string is the A part, the hammer-on we're using on is, is the end of this. So what I'm saying is the beginning of the second part is, is not a sandwich but it becomes one again, but it's a, it's, so I don't want to confuse you by saying it's like that, okay, so that everybody understands, because I verbalized it probably in a confusing way, but anyhow, so you're going to uh, hammer on and then, and then drop thumb again, so let me make, let's go through what the whole actual second part is, okay, which I'm going to, yeah, first I just want to play it so I don't mess you up again, okay, so I'm going to do it, like, like this one, yeah, I'm just going to do it, okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's the whole thing before it changes. So we see we already know both devices. It's the order of them, okay? So... Okay, so we need to be putting it into two segments that make up the whole second, the middle part of the second, because the second part has two parts that are not the same. So it repeats something twice in the first half, and then something in the second half, which is tagged by the crookedness, and then we're, we're out of there, okay? So in this part, it's going to go drop thumb, drop thumb, hammer on slide, drop thumb is the, is the first thing in the, in the second part. So you're going to go... Uh, and another drop, uh, drop thumb after it, okay? So two drop thumbs right there, one hammer on, another drop thumb. So let's do that sequence as, as the beginning of the second part, not attached to the first part on its own, okay? So we're just going to go...
starting without it but ending with it. So here's the pattern. Let me show you how long and what. Okay, so what is that middle part? Then it's going to start a different type of treatment. Okay, so that's the full length of the thing. Okay, so I'm going to do that same thing slowly. Let's play through that pattern of it over and over so that we understand exactly what that is. Okay. Say it is, and then you'll find out. Uh, 
So, but if you want to be able to access that tune and, and be able to play it along, we, the way we recorded it is true to the sound, so you can uh, play with it and you can, um, we, we also have it so that if you turn the stereo on our recording, the banjo can be on one side, you can hear not the whole band at once, so you can use that to your advantage. Um, we don't have the CDs with me now, but we'll have them at the concert tonight and at the dance tonight, uh, so if you want those, just run by later on. Um, all right, so let's go one more time over the whole thing, and then we'll start uh, a run over that very last part, which is luckily similar to the second, or the part we already know. It should be pretty uh, easy to wrap it up. Okay, so one more time, the full thing. Ready?
feel like you got something out of it, or at least somewhere to go with training your right hand to do something or something. Uh, I appreciate y'all coming to the workshop, and uh, I look forward to seeing y'all tonight at the concert.